I wanna show you today how to patch a hole in PVC pipe. Right here, you can see the drip starting to form, and I have a hole in a two inch PVC pipe that is actually the vent for the inducer fan on my furnace. I actually purposely drilled this hole in the pipe because it was really cold outside. We were doing a project where we needed the drywall mud to set up, we were starting to paint, and I needed heat in the house but the furnace would continue to cycle. And what was going on is the pipe going outside the outlet is actually higher than the inlet, so the moisture was starting to pool in a low point in the vent. So I needed to drill a quick hole, drained out a bunch of water, and then the furnace was back up and running. Well, now I need to repair that. But there's a number of different reasons on how you might get a hole in the PVC pipe. Let me show you two different methods to repair that. One is a newer product, and this is where you're not going to have to use primer or cement. It's pretty similar if you look inside to what's called a shark bite fitting, if you've ever used shark bite on your water lines around the house. So I'll show you how to use that one and it's about a 10 or $11 coupling. That's super expensive if you compare it to a standard DWV coupling. Now DWV stands for drain, waste, and vent. So those are the type of pipes that you would use these fittings on not used for pressurized lines that you might see in agriculture or some other applications. So if you look at just the cost, it seems like a no brainer to go with a 70 cent one. Well, if you're a homeowner, you really don't do this very often. You don't have the primer and cement. You're probably gonna have to buy a combo pack which if you get the four ounce bottles might be five or six dollars, but if you have to get the eight ounce bottles, that might get up to 10 or $11. So now all of a sudden you're on kind of price parity with the two different solutions. So you can look down in the description and I'll show you all the different products for both methods, but let's jump in. I'll show you how to cut this pipe and start to do the first method, which will be just the push to fit coupling. So with your hacksaw, with the new blade and the teeth facing forward, you're gonna see the pipe's gonna jump all over while I make this cut, but a few tips. One, do not apply much pressure down. Just do fast, short strokes and it should help you get through the pipe. Two, make sure that you're not pushing the pipe where it's gonna pinch the blade or that will stick the blade and make the cut much harder. Then once that's done, since I have gloves on, I'm just gonna deburr with my gloves, just smoothing the inside and outside, which easily will take all the PVC shavings or the burrs off of the pipe. Now, since we're doing the push to fit, it does come with sandpaper. So you'll sand the outside edges, creating a chamfer, which will make the pipe easier to insert into the fitting. Then you need some type of lubricant. All I'm using is dish soap here. So just putting dish soap around each of the outsides and then marking one inch to know that when I got full depth within the coupling. So here's the coupling. Make sure your O-rings are in the channels and seated. And then without it at an angle, so straight onto the pipe, you'll press and do a slight twist and you'll see that one inch mark will then go away. So that completes option one with the push to fit coupling. As I prep for option two, this will show one of the cool little features on the push to fit coupling, and that is it's removable. So all you have to do is do some small twists of the pipe and it will pull right out of the coupling. Now you can see on the outside of the PVC pipe, you can see the teeth that were kind of grabbing into the outside as we twisted and removed. So now for the second option, we're just gonna prime and then cement or glue the coupling. So we'll prime the one side on the outside of the pipe and inside of the coupling. Then we'll glue, glue the inside of the coupling, outside of the pipe. Then we'll go ahead and press that on with a slight turn, making sure it's fully seated and then hold that for about 10 seconds just to make sure it doesn't back off of the pipe. Then we'll move on to our other side. Doing the same steps again. Prime, priming takes a little getting used to. Usually you'll get too much primer and it'll kind of run all over the place. And then with our cement, you do not have much time once you put the prime and cement on. You should be doing this in a pretty quick little application in about 10 seconds. So then we'll push a little twist 
And I would hold this for quite a while, especially in this instance, because when I let go, it actually will try to pull apart the pipes. So you wanna make sure it's fully set up before you let go, or you might have it backing out, which could cause leaks down the road. So my own personal preference, gluing together a simple 70 cent coupler is the way to go. I think it's a good skill to have as a DIYer and it will save you money in the long run. Now I do understand if you're just looking to solve one issue and that is a hole in your PVC pipe, you do not have primer, you do not have cement, and you don't have a bunch of projects ahead of you, I get why the Connectite is handy and might be something that you're considering. At least now you know there's two solutions that would fix a problem such as this, and you can pick the best one for your specific circumstances. Now, if you have an old home such as this, there's a high likelihood that you don't have outlets everywhere that you want them. Check out this video right here and we will walk you through the complete process to put in a new outlet so you can get power where it's convenient to you. Thanks for joining us on this video and take care.